Glad to have you here. Well, thank you, Jeff. You know, I, I went out and I saw uh, my previous co-host, who's now retired, Mr. Tom White. And Stump and a half? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he seems to be in good spirits, recovering quite nicely. And uh, I, I think he, he can't wait to get out and play golf. Well, that's his motivation. I, the second motivation is to come back here and fill this seat again. And, 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 uh, no, and the people no, can't no. wait for it. Well, you know, I, I think you're wrong there. That's a little farther down the line. The second motivation is his wife getting ready to kick his butt out the uh, house. <laughs> well, she had all went to the shovel snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he was in the window <laughs> with the sure phone right. telling her what she was missing. <laughs> Yep, they were having a good time up there. No, he's getting but, there, though. But, uh, yeah, no, I was over there, and there, he's doing well in good spirits. And uh, you're right. Uh, can't wait to get back into politics and uh, tell the Democrats everything they're doing wrong. There's plenty to talk about there. No, oh, ab <laughs> absolutely. But, uh, hey, gas prices are still inching their way up. Yeah, yeah. I was you just know? saying, my local station that I, that I go to here in town, I finally made it a full dollar increase from the week before. So we're, we're doing well. Yep. yep. Moving in the right so, direction. So where are we going to stop? You know, I hear people say, uh, you know, it's going to hit $7. You know, and some people are saying by September it'll be 10 Well, uh, and all I could say is it all could be mitigated. You know, I'm not saying it wouldn't go go away, the increases, but it, it certainly could be mitigated if we change some of the policies. And But I'm not the president. Well, yeah, yeah, this is true. <laughs> But anyway, oh yeah, you know, um, some of the policies would be real simple to do, and it's it's you know open, uh, go back to the policies of the Trump era and and uh, restart everything that um, Biden walked in on the first day and you know canceled. Uh, although granted, it will take a little time for all that to kick in and make a difference. They say it would it would take to the first quarter of obviously of next year of 2023. No, but you know something, that's okay. If, if that's what it's going to take to get us back to where we. We're down to a couple bucks a gallon, and you know, well, even, that's fine. even if it stopped us right where we're at today and prevented it from going to seven or, or dollars yeah. or more a gallon. Uh, but the other thing, too, is what it's doing to the food and the cost of food. I mean, if you're looking at the grocery stores, I'm sure you've noticed that the uh, uh, shelves are empty and the cost of food is starting to go up, up, up. Well, you got to look at you got to look at the futures, too. You know, I, I look at look at the the commodities. Look at the the pigs. Just an example. Can you yep. imagine the price of of grain as it continues to increase to getting to you? And uh, and, and so the farmers are either going to uh, have to cut back on their um, on their you know size of their of their of their group, or uh, you know somewhere along the line you're going to continue to pay. And it, it's a, a sad situation, but. That's the prices. It's not just food. It's it's everything you can imagine. It's it's creeping up. I think inflation is now at seven point nine percent increase. Uh, you know, highest in forty years, and and everyone knows it because everyone's feeling it, and they're feeling it one way or another. But the most immediate impact is definitely filling your tank because you see it on a weekly basis. I would think grocery stores you see it on a weekly basis, and uh, you know. But it's it's a, a lose lose situation with, with what's going on, and I you know it is. And I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say it's all uh, you know President Biden's fault, but you know something his policies definitely exasperated the situation that we're that we're in today. Absolutely, you know I, I I'm going to actually agree with you. It's on a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, and one of the things that i i really don't understand about the the democrats is by instituting all these policies they really hurt the people that they uh profess to want to help the most because you know they, they say we're for the wor working people the middle class you know we want to help the uh uh less fortunate take a step up and yet all this does is knock them back and back and back and back i mean if you're you know, on a fixed budget, as many of these people are, if you, you know, uh, say Section 8 housing or uh, even food stamps, none of that goes as far. And you know what? I, I've run into a lot of Section housing where they uh, people that can't even afford the apartments. I mean, you know, they're talking about building market rate housing out in North Wyndham. Well, market rate housing is very expensive today. All right. Apartments are very expensive. And a lot of these other agencies and funding programs aren't keeping up. Well, the, I think the homeless situation is just going to be so far 
gone in the next couple of years between the prices of primary residence for folks, you know, first time home buyers. Oh, dear. these these programs are not going to be able to help because you're still going to have money to get in them no matter what. It's like getting into an apartment. You, you you're not going to get in without your first and last month's rent or security. Two months worth of security. And, yeah. and, and when everything is going to be a thousand or, or above, I would imagine that's well, what the you, rental you, rates right, are these you're, days. You're getting there. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's and, and if you're building new oh, property, geez, it's going to be more that, than that. I sure, mean, that's, you know, that's great for you know, the mill rate. You know. But you're looking at two bedroom apartments with heat and hot water, like a lot of the big uh, uh, complexes. Complexes do um, at fourteen hundred wow. bucks a month. Wow. You know, so that's twenty eight hundred dollars for security. You're talking three, four grand. And these folks will never be able to get, get out of that. The door. They'll never be able to get out of that cycle of being no. able to save for a natural down payment on a home. And it, and it's not. It's that's not. That's not a good thing to. Well, no, it's not. But you know, the other thing too is, a, it, you know, I always go think about, uh, you know, uh, college education. You know how they're all whining about, oh, uh, you know, their college debt because they went in debt. Well, you know. Uh, there, there are certain things to go in debt for, okay? And, and granted, you know, it, it, it seems like a lot of debt for them, but if they use that education and they apply themselves, they can certainly pay off that debt and continue on for that, all right? Um, the thing is, you can't fix lazy. There are a lot of people out there that are lazy. Well, it, these two years, too, and I was listening to another show on the way down here, in these past two years, in 2020, 2021, the work ethic of your colleagues, per se. Oh, it's uh, just falling right it's, off the... It's, it's, it's gone. There is no longer a work ethic. How can I get out of this? I don't want to travel to that. Uh, I'm not going to push myself. Right. And then I still run into people, and I'm not, you know, there's no exaggeration. I'm running into people. That, oh, yeah, we took the summer off. We did this and did that. And I, and I keep saying to myself, tell me the secret of survival. Right. How, my, how, right. My taxes haven't, my house is paid for, but... My taxes haven't gone away. My insurance. I mean, I think no. I, I, I can't live any less expensive than what I'm doing. I, I just don't know how you did it. Well, that that's it. You know, and uh, we've asked that question uh, multiple times. But, you know, uh, these younger people in, in those states, they've got to get to work, get busy. And, and right now, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. I know things are t difficult, but, you know, the people that put their head down and go to work, they'll do well. You know, and uh, unfortunately, our schools don't seem to teach that ethic. There are too many, you know, moms and dads and too many programs that make it too easy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, know I don't have an explanation as to what's going on. I just know uh, that, you know, I'm glad I'm on this, this end of my career and I can see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. But I but I, I and I and I look at the the younger millennials and, and, and maybe you're right. Maybe it was. Mom and dad, and you know, I'm a mom and dad of millennial, you know, professionals. They're all working, have their homes and everything. But and I see them going to work. I see them wanting to work and, and, and do and do well. But there's a vast majority of them that they come in and they they look at the corner office with the with the windows and everything else, yep. and that's all they're waiting for. Like the old guy's going to go, and I'm going to take that spot and put my foot on yeah, the desk. Yeah, no, you know, the, it's, the, it's it's a strange environment in the corporate world right now. Well, the the idea of earning, yeah, your, it's it's gone. Well, you know the. Um, yeah, it it does, and uh, you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this on to Tom and collective bargaining and the unions. You know, uh, raises should be earned, not just automatically given out. It they it should be based on merit. You know the way it was years ago, and that that spurred people to work harder. Right. You know, uh, yeah. You know, I'm going to stay a little later. I'm going to do a little more, or I'm going to, you know, be the best at what I can be to, to do that. Not, you know, what this is all I got to do, and I'll get my two percent or three percent raise in the collective bargaining, and I'm okay with that. See, so and, the, and the, you don't... that that's that's a problem for me because yeah. you know. Um, there's there's a um, there's a great book out there. It's called the Five Thousand Year Leap, and it really you know boils down to the United States and how from the inception of the United States, the whole world has just taken off technology wise, money wise, um, uh, our standard of living wise, and it's because you know uh, all the restraints were taken off us when we. You know, fought the battle for independence, and and all that. We were free to do what we wanted to do, and innovate, and think out of the box, or think in the box, or turn the box into a circle. All right, and we've it's been the United States, and it's our ingenuity, the individual's ingenuity, not the government. 
uh, you got to get them out of the way. They are the biggest drag on people, um, uh, putting them in boxes and keeping them, you know, under wraps. It, it's a horrid thing they do because all these problems, if you just let it go out to the individuals, we'd be able to fix it. Mm. You know, but um, when you start looking, and it's a great book. You got to read it. it. It'll explain to you uh, a lot of things that it go that went on to make this country so prosperous. And it also talks about um, the the decline of our country, and we've we're seeing it uh, right now. The, our country isn't where it used to be, and a lot of this. You know, uh, came in, the, started back in the 60s and the 70s uh, when we started outsourcing a lot of our manufacturing. But once again, you know, um, it was basically greed, mm. you know, by individuals, large corporations. And then um, I, even the individual, you know, as far as wanting, uh, you know, their raises without being married. Do I, I don't believe in slave labor or that kind of thing, or the sweatshops, no, you know, um, should there be a fair wage? But I mean, you're going to pay somebody twenty dollars to work at McDonald's an well, hour. What, what you mentioned about you know uh, personal performance and getting merit raises, that stopped. And, well, I can I can only give an example of a few companies that I know of um, that corporates stopped that about. I'm going to say they started doing that about 10 years ago. They, everything used to be merit-based. You know, there was a, a certain X amount of percent you were going to get no matter what, basically, to yeah. retain you. And But then they looked at your merit, your what you, they yeah. had performance scale they measured you by, and you had an opportunity to get a decent raise in the, in the, in the corporate. Or, or a now, bonus at the end of the year. And, well, that's all tied in tied the bonus, okay? Yeah. And now everyone... And I'm, it started it started ten years ago. Everyone that I know in 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 the in the industry that I'm in, everyone gets a you know a raise, and everyone gets a, the same bonus, right? No matter what you do. Right. So you got a slacker over here doing nothing. You're you're crushing yourself. You're crushing your numbers. You're doing what you're supposed to do, and you're being, you know, given the same amount of reward as as the guy who's just getting by, and. And I don't know how and why that changed. I think that a lot of it's reflective. And again, because I've talked to HR on certain things, because you know the, the, their whole thing is to um, to have the millennials gravitate to the industry. You know, because it's an aging industry that, you know, in particular Correct. that I'm in, and 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 so they need to make it so it's so now they come on board. They they've got three weeks and five years vacation instead of waiting seven years to get that third week. Um, they're oh, you you can vacation. do this. Well, I'm, you're, I'm not saying you, you're self-employed. There is no vacation, right? right? And yeah, I can yeah. appreciate that. I was self-employed oh, yeah. for a dozen years myself. I know the, the, the single ownership, the sole ownership LLC situation I was in. But the, I'm just saying, and the reality of it is, so I know both sides of that, that coin. But even then, when I had my own place, I was given raises based on what you did. Oh, absolutely. How productive were you in helping my company be successful? Well, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. No, no. But, you know, uh, this is, you know, today we call it the, the woke deal you know yeah. and uh this goes back i woke to a green nightmare yeah anyway <laughs> the, the problems with your lawn huh the uh, uh uh you know this goes back to every child gets a trophy yes oh i know you know i remember and, and, yeah. and yeah. you know that has instilled and taken away the individualism and and the desire to do better oh we're gonna get a trophy let's go out and just have fun yeah well fun is granted fun is part of it but you want to win all right, you know the 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 first place loser is second place, you know, and everybody wants to be a winner. And once you take that away from people and and kind of put everybody in the same mayonnaise, so to speak, or the same flavor, it all it all goes to poop. No, you, you're right about that. I, I remember again. I remember when the programs changed. I want to use a different word. I was just it, I just made it. I was just about done with my little. Yeah career as <laughs> as dad the coach and yep. whether it's baseball basketball or or soccer i didn't get involved in coaching soccer that just that game no, just drove I, me nuts yes um but the kids played but I, the reality of it is you know there were three trophies we used to give out by the time i ended 
my time doing that. There was a boatload of trophies oh, given yeah. out at, at the end of the season. It, you know, it's so worth, you know, I don't know if what it meant to the kid to get the trophy versus what it meant for the parent to see the kid get the trophy. I don't know who was getting the most reward. Right. Well, a lot of times a lot of the parents do it because they they want to do it. They want to help their kids yeah. uh, succeed on things like that. But, um, you. you know, once, once again, I, I don't think it uh, helps uh, build a, a work ethic for these uh, kids growing up. Uh, to be in those kind of situations. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hi, Jeff. It's Larry Kellogg. Uh, hi, Ken. How you doing? Hey, Larry. Um, a couple of things is uh, I noticed you were talking about, uh, you know, the every kid gets a trophy and, and inflation and wages. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at our budget in town, and I'm not seeing the inflation figures that we're seeing right now reflected in that budget, number one. Number two is they're ignoring revenue that, which, granted, yes, we have a surplus this year and we're going to get a bill increase or decrease, uh, but that doesn't account for the last couple of years. If you actually look at the budget numbers, not the mill, but the actual numbers, you'll see that the numbers are still increasing, and they're increasing Correct. higher than they want the inflation rate is. If you look at a lot of the budget line items, you'll see that they're well over uh, 20% increase in budget. What the town manager and the town mayor is doing, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, is they're sugarcoating the raise in the budget when there doesn't have to be a raise in the budget. And they're ignoring a lot of the issues that are continuing around town with the properties that they already own that they're not maintaining. For example, the stage is a perfect example of that. If you walk down there today, you'll see around where the columns come down and meet the actual stage that's tracking the concrete. That could easily be repaired by epoxy or and or, you know, filling the cracks and, putting epoxy paint over top. But anyway, that's beside the point. These are the type of things that is being sugar-coated during these budget meetings. And I, I, I got to say, honestly, up front, that there's like three people that go to these budget meetings that actually speak. And I don't, I don't, I just can't get it. I, I don't, do the people in town really want to pay for other people's parking? So the people in town that are paying taxes really want to pay for other people's car taxes. And that's what's happening today. That's what's happening in Willimantic right now. And I, I just, for the life of me, I can't figure it out because they say it's the young people that want all these things, but it's the young people that are going to be paying for it. Not uh, uh, Woefully, but here, I've got an explanation for that. A lot, you know, a lot of moms and dads, they go to work all day. Their kids may go to school. They come home. They just want to be able to sit down, have dinner, play with the kids, and go on their way with their life. And by keeping their head down and just doing that, they're oblivious to a lot of this type of thing that's going on that we talk about and try and inform them. And uh, they're just happy doing that. And if they figure if they don't stick their head up and rock the boat, everything will be okay. Well, well, Larry, just looking really, really quick at, at that the budget scenario. I mean, and they, Jeff and I talked about it on. off here. I mean, they're, they're all up. Uh, the expenses are up all the way around, right? So uh, the schools are going for 6.97, but the voter will see zero because they do have funds that they didn't expend from grants and this and that to cover all that. But in reality, it's a 6.97% increase. And if, again, if it's if it stays like that, that impacts the, uh, MBR. the MBR. And then the town, too, has uh, huge increases in, in the expenditures and you know and so the funding is hanging around that money that that's coming in hanging around there uh, is being used to offset it so it's going to be a quick sell so uh, these budgets will pass they're going to pass relatively quickly because they're going to show a, I hope a, not. a decrease they're going to show the board of ed at, at zero percent um, 
but that's not that's, true. I, 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 that's, Larry, that's I'm, I'm, Larry, Joe game. What's that? You're you're right, Larry. Let let, let Ken finish. No, no, I know it, it's 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 not a true picture when you're still increasing your cost by six point nine seven percent. I'm just saying it will go through. It will go through relatively quickly and without any fighting and issues because they're going to see a decrease. But next year, if the extra cash isn't hanging around, or the year after that, we're still going to have to come up with all kinds of extra money again. You're going to see a pretty sizable hit. Oh. And then you got projects that are going to be starting to come on board that you'll be paying for. Well, we're ho hopefully coming on well, board. Well, hopefully coming on board. But uh, that's just the reality of it. But, you know, it, 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 this is a soft, soft sell. This is easy, this budget. Yeah, which I don't understand because, again, it's a shell game. The mayor and the town manager is putting out information that's not entirely true. They're sugarcoating a lot of the information where they're saying, Oh, you're getting a mill increase. You're getting a mill decrease. I mean, you're getting all this. You're getting all these benefits. That look what we did for you. In reality, the budget itself is going up. Correct. Across yeah, the, 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 board. Expen the expenditures are and up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, oh no. But the revenue's not up. No. Exactly. Exactly. And, we're, but we're ignoring revenue. Yes, exactly, because there's extra money floating around with flush. Well, this is Connecticut. We are the the Democrats of taxes state to death, and we'll continue to tax us, us to death. And I, I go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, what what they're you know what I'm looking at because I do budgets in a different town uh, is two three years from now when all this extra money's gone. Uh, yeah. you, you know, uh, we haven't got the second installment of the COVID funds right. yet. We're still on the first. Suppose the second installment doesn't come. Yeah. All right. I don't disagree. This this uh, voting year is going to be very, very interesting. It, it will be. Even in Connecticut right here. Right. And, because and the gas price is number one, and now they're talking about in the state, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to lower the gross gas premium. Well, oh, yeah, we're going to raise the gas tax, which hits the poor people more than anybody else. Oh, absolutely. But so, you know, we've got Susan Johnson. I'm for the poor. I'm for the middle class. I'm no, for everybody. that's a lie. That's and just the, for a vote. Don't, don't. That, please don't be like is, that. <laughs> that's that that's me. That's our ice And on top of that, on top of everything... Why do the people in this town not stand up for it? That, you know, that that's going to be one of those questions we're going to be asking till we hit the grave. Yeah, uh, and afraid. we're laying all this stuff on our kids. Yeah, well, they are. They are. are we, but they don't. Six they, million now in debt. They they don't. So we'll, they don't look that far ahead. A lot of these people don't understand the numbers. Uh, you know, hopefully things will go bust and it will have a huge reset and uh, things will change. You know, it, it's like yeah. all, it's like all these college students, you know, with this uh, college debt. And they're saying, oh, they shouldn't have it and on and on. Well, maybe they have to look at maybe it, uh, the professors are making too much money. Maybe the colleges are uh, charging too much money. May, you know, may, instead of forgiving the debt that they've got, maybe we should look at how they incurred it or the prices they are paying for yeah. it. I don't care if it's a yeah, state. Maybe, or, maybe or, they or, shouldn't be doing that to weeding 101. There you go. Yeah, whether it's a state college or a private college, it's never a budget issue because they just bump up the tuition. Every well, they, yeah. well, it's and not only that. But look at UConn; they're, they're tax subsidized by the taxpayer Correct. all over yeah. the, all over the state, yeah. and things like that. And they've got a huge endowment yeah. uh, sitting there. Yeah, no, we shouldn't be funding these things. But why? What I don't understand is why is the working party and even the Green Party coming to the table and saying enough is enough? You're affecting us. Oh, absolutely. Maybe not today. But tomorrow and the next day, these grants, I hate grants. I really do. Grants are nothing but seed money for extra taxpayer funds. Absolutely. The they, grants come from taxpayer money. And they don't go away. Don't, lots of times. Don't get yourself in that. Yep. And I refuse, I absolutely refuse to use the word when associated with taxpayer funds free. No. Because it's not. It's a, it's, and, and more and more and more people are, I think, are starting to realize that because this inflation, this gas is killing us. 
Well, right you know, now. Th- the prices in the grocery store, but you know, um, well, that's what I mean. Gas affects oh, yeah. everything. It, it, Delivery, it, supply, everything. Yeah, but you know the grants are just a nice, so, nice way to say extortion. We're yeah. going to get you something for free, and then when that grant runs out and you've got five workers there, you know you're supposed to let them go, but it, you know they're going to come to you and say, "Oh, we can't do that to these five people." No, it, it, right. So it's just a, a way to get their foot in the door. I, I, I look at it as a form of extortion, and uh, people swallow it. They don't understand. Yep. You know, I have tenants. I, I'm i in the rental business. Their rents go up, and they look at me. Why? I said, well, didn't your gas go up? I said, well, my insurance went up. This went up. That went up. you got to pay yep. for it. You know, and that's just the way it works. You want to buy a house, you understand it. But, uh, yeah, uh, I don't I don't understand it either. The, I don't know whether they're not teaching people in school how to figure this out. Probably not. You know, how most of them can't figure out how to do uh, simple taxes and or interest, right? Well, on any loan that that baffles. I, I learned that in eighth grade. Right? Yeah, they probably now, cut granted, that program because it was started dirt, by a grant but, program. <laughs> anyway, what else you got, Larry? Um, the the only other thing I got is, you know, I've been working with the Energy Commission here, and I got to tell you, these solar projects right now are being stalled by the town, and they've been approved by the town council. That's what I can't get, is they are being stalled by the town itself, and basically basically they came through, and and I'm not going to toot my own horn on this, but I'll tell you, the, the, the solar bill for the town community center and senior center the first year was going to be 11.2 cents. Well, that just got lowered to 8.7 cents per kilowatt at a million kilowatts. So figure that one, or a million watts, I'm sorry. Figure that one out when it comes to dollar savings. And it was just me reading the contract and didn't understand what the hell they were doing and bringing it up to the Energy Commission, who brought it up to the town manager, who brought it up to Titan and said, what's going on? And Titan said, oh, yeah, we made a mistake. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> they got caught in you, a mistake. <laughs> the, yeah, that, that's great. And we're paying right now Titan four cents a watt, not a kilowatt, a watt for their suggestion to put solar on certain areas in town. I could do that for free. Yep. Granted, I'm not running the project, which they said they're doing and they're only getting 2%, but that's, that's not what I'm saying. They're getting a 25-year contract on solar energy that we don't know what's going to happen five years from now. Oh, no, you don't. But yeah. there, the, wouldn't Jeff, you're a businessman. Wouldn't you love a 25-year contract guaranteed? Oh, if I could write it, absolutely. It would be, I you mean, know, all kinds of increases that, I was, this time. I was kind of hoping Tom would be around because I, I wanted to – kind of ding him a little bit on his uh, negotiations with the union in that wouldn't he love 25-year contract? Oh, they would. And I can tell you, nobody would ever get fired. They'd have a 4% increase every single year. Oh, absolutely. For the next 25. I'd love that myself. You know, I know it's not keeping pace with inflation. If you had to take everything together, you'd probably want at least a 12% raise, at well, least for the next I, couple you know, of I years. I feel bad because the rate, right now the rate of inflation is 7.9%. Oh, it's as higher the, than that. No, it's 79 at the end of February. It was 79 And I think the average raise these days was you know, between 25 and 3%. So we should renegotiate all those contracts and help well, these people. Well, wait a second. No, 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 no. What about the average worker out there? How about we decrease our... <laughs> Our taxes by the rate of inflation. Oh, that helps. That hurts the whole economy when you decrease taxes and you uh, cut costs. It just the whole cycle of the economy goes to hell when you start cutting. 
Okay, everyone needs a little hey, bit listen, of Listen, we could do a lot of cutting on you, and there'd still be a, a lot left over. <laughs> but anyway. Let's be nice. Oh, he doesn't know how, Larry. He does not know how to be nice. Hey, I, I could use a little cutting myself. So. Be, yeah, but, you know, how about, how about, you know, offsetting the taxes by the rate of inflation? Let, let, let's take 7% off, you know, your, your taxes this year. Jeez. You know, instead yeah, of instead of instead, I know that, but instead of you know saving two hundred dollars uh-huh. or maybe three hundred dollars because they're going to go down to forty six point something mills, how about just taking a a flat per- forty forty nine? Well, that's where we're at. Oh, we're no. at, we're over fifty. We're over fifty. Fifty, 50 point what? I don't know. Fifty. And they're going down one point seven six. No. Okay, I thought it was... Uh, that was the Willimantic Service District. Okay. Yeah, what's the town going up or, or down, Larry? Do you know? Yeah. Um, right now, I'm, I'm thinking from one... And don't quote me on this, yeah, yeah. because I'm having a senior moment. We here. don't have to. You're but, on here. <laughs> uh, two, I think um, a total of 2.5 mil in the Willimantic Service District and only one point something... And in again, I think wide. it's one point one in the window. In the oh yeah, that's what I thought. Which again, I'm I'm dead set against. I think we should be one down. But yeah, I I was assuming. <clears throat> you know what happens there. I was assuming at least two two and a half mil across the board decrease, but that wasn't going to happen. No, no, no. You're not. There's too many people on that board right now that do not understand finance. I'm True. sorry that's. That's a fact. Well, and it's not then hitting their you've households. You've got people that don't even bother showing up or don't say anything during the meeting. Don't you think if you were responsible for a budget, you would have some questions if the raise they're looking for Hell yeah. is 46%? Oh, yeah. Well, as don't usual, you, you got to. Yeah. As a regular person, you would say, what in the hell is going on here? Where's my raise? And the uh, right. reason I- that. They're moving money around at the end of the year, which, granted, they, they have a right to do. Yep, I spoke to you. Do I, people realize they've moved around almost a million dollars in the last two meetings? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, you know, I understand how these the budgets work. I spoke to a couple Board of Finance members, and it was their impression at the beginning of this uh, cycle that they were anticipating, you know, budgets coming in, showing the ability to go down for the town-wide tax rate at least two mil. And I was like, ah, if you can go two, two and a half, you know, do something on a temporary bit because you know it's going to go right back up. Yeah. There, there's no oh, yeah. doubt in my mind that's going to go right back up. But if, if that's all they did, I, I wonder how these Board of Finance people are going to speak up or not. You know, probably not. Okay, and last but not least, and, I, and I'm going to let you go because like, I know you got to do a commercial, is that I want people to realize when Devivo was talking about the community center, community yes. center roof has a buckle in it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. They yeah. already accepted the building. They have 60 days to correct it, or it's on the taxpayer. Jeez. You read the contract that is written with these people, and DeVivo knew it. He knows they got a roof buckle. Right. It's in. The, well, it's in the paper. Uh, and the any, anything that is dealing with the property, yes, they're going to replant feed in April. That's beyond the 60 days. But who cares? Seed's cheap. Well, the other thing... You're well, talking you, about a roof buckle. You're talking some serious money. Well, they're replacing doors because they don't fit. I mean, you know, and uh, operate properly. They're not, not but, up to fire but, code. But if you listen to the town manager at his 530 meeting on uh, Thursdays or and or the town meeting, you'd swear, oh, my God, this building is ready to go. We're moving in. We're just doing the final touches. We're waxing the floor. Well, you you got to understand, they're there to sell these projects and to make themselves look good. It, it's really not about the citizens. It, it's about their jobs. Maybe we should cut their, their uh, salaries by the... Uh, uh, you if, can't if you do that, the board, Jeff. You cut the, the income board, of other people, income. you're going to screw the economy up. Well, cut the income. Oh. Jeez. I'll do that. I don't think go we should back be to paying school. the taxes. Go back to school. No, no, no. Hey, no. guys, I need to go back to school. great talking to you. I All righty. <laughs> you. Don't worry about it. We're going to take a vacation right now. We'll be I, I right got, back. I do have to tell you, though, it's fun. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Welcome back to the Republic Forum. I'm Jeff. And this is Ken, the voice Bolin. And I'm back. Yes, you my are. Main, my main man, Jeff, <laughs> who is learning how to be a nice guy these days. Uh, I can just see a lot of his fire is out. He is... He's really getting. He's starting. To, he told me in my ear how much he loves Susan and 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 Dennis and everybody, and he wants to work with them and make things go forward. And you know the town man, the town manager is well. Just I, it's like sitting with a new guy. I mean, I don't know if he went on medication or, but I'm proud of him. I'm proud of you, Jeff. Can you shut the video feed <laughs> off so there's plausible deniability for what it's about to happen? <laughs> how's that for you that's great anyways how's things going on main street jeff i see where, where popeyes is getting there yeah, oh yeah popeyes the, the is building there. next door that's to us here is, more, is getting more there. fast food chicken you know uh hey. do, what, what do we do we talk about who michelle obama with all this all this eating right now yeah, 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 her here, garden here, and everything right here we are uh, uh pushing fast food on people you know with more sugary drinks and on and on and on now i you know and i don't care what I'm going to open up the pork palace, the other white meat. No, no. What? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what do you got, Jeff? Yeah, no, it just it just popped out of there. I, I thought you were going <coughs> to go into the pastry business and do the... Um, the oh. donuts? Yeah, do, no, the, I'm do s- the donut. Hey, uh, it's, it's, it's Lent. I, I've given up donuts. I've got the shakes. I'm not going to deny well, it. Well, okay, okay. so it, is that just a donut with a, that has a hole in it? Or is a Boston cream a donut, or is it a pastry? Listen, I mean, there's a border. I, listen, are, are we? My uh, name isn't President Clinton. I'm not going to go to the gray area of what sex is and what sex isn't, because it's it's it, the donut with the cream in it is. Uh, it's a donut with a cream in it. Oh, oh, you better believe it. Okay, you know, so it's a donut. That's right. Oh, okay. That's right. It's All right. A donut. So I'm so staying away. I'm going right. to do the. I'm going to. I'm staying strong. Well, then you could say an eclair is pastry because don't definitely... even go with the eclairs right now. Will you? Okay. <laughs> I'm, <nothing here. laughs> I'm probably going home for a damn salad. I don't know what she's doing tonight. Anyway, no, it's probably healthy for you anyway. Yeah, and she, you she tries something. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it, you're right. It is Lent. A lot of people give up meat. I know back when I was growing up, it was meat. But uh, yeah. a- a- after spending time and reading things, and this is my interpretation, you're supposed to give up something you really enjoy. That's what I did. You're right. You know, and it might not be meat. And for you, it's definitely donuts. Yep. But, um, you know, uh, donuts isn't a big deal for me. So it's not something I'm going to look at giving up because I don't eat a lot of donuts anyway. But um, beach weather's coming up. I'm trying to slim down. <laughs> Last year, a guy tried to harpoon me. Yeah, <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. I knew that was yeah, coming. Yeah, you did. You did. But <laughs> another beluga. But anyway, <laughs> and you don't poop caviar, so. No. <laughs> the, well. You know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as we yeah. th- digress, the uh, no, I I think the taxpayers should be made aware. I think they need to actually knock these budgets down, even with all the sweet talking about it and uh, stuff. Because you know, as you said, Ken, uh, these raises are going to be there next year, and they're especially on yeah. the school budget, yeah. they're, and they're going to be carved in stone. If the expenditures are going up, as they say, yep. and I heard that first, well, day, the expenditures know, are going up. Well, it's time. That's inflation. I, part oh, of it. Absolutely. It's contractual. I get it. But there's got to be other things you need to look at. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you, it really has to. Somewhere along the line, well, wh- wh- it, you're not going to have this money to keep selling this at a lower rate to other to people. And, and, and these increases are going to happen. It's unfortunate because it's like your own home. But you, your income isn't going up, right? Right. Car, you're, you're set. You're on but a salary. Your bills are going but up. But your bills are going up. Electricity, $30, $40 a month up no matter what. Fuel is doubled since I purchased it in August, right? I started at two and a quarter. It's now five nineteen. Yeah, you got to fill that whole meeting oil tank. Exactly, so thousand dollars. So what do I do? Either I go out and get more income, right, or I start cutting down on other things. All right, and this is what I'm saying. It's as simple as that. The kitchen table economics. Maybe we ought to start robbing banks. I'm not into that. You're not into that? No, it's too much of a risk. Really? Too much about what? A risk reward you, you, is a good you, you, Oh, okay. You know. You're not that fast at running. You'd nah, are you kidding me? <laughs> You'd have to be the driver. You'd have to roll me down the street. 
<laughs> hey, listen, I'm not suggesting anybody go out and do that. <laughs> Please, put okay, enough so don't do here. that. Uh, and and they won't have any money uh, shortly uh, yeah. as everybody starts taking it out to pay their bills. Well, that's, that's what you're already on, hearing. Go you on hear, and on. Yeah, what you just said is exactly what was on the news just yesterday on a local level. I, I'm a Channel 3 guy. And, and, and literally, that's what they're saying. These people are taking money out of their banks to make ends meet. Their savings, their nest egg. Oh, yeah. To make it. And that's not that's not a good that's no, not good. No, that that that's just puts good. everybody just in more peril down the road. Closer and closer to being the guy who's homeless. And how much how much more homeless can those who are working and unfortunate can afford to help support? Well, we can. But you, uh, know? you know, once again, we talk about that, and I, like I've said time and time again, uh, you know, we take these people, we want to house them and do all that, but we want to house them at a, at a uh, Level that's far beyond where they need to be. Yeah. Okay. Do Do you need uh, fancy insulation and windows? No. You need a roof over your head, a source of heat, and uh, I'd like to say uh, maybe a wood floor. But that's it. You know, uh, for years and years we had one room. Uh, we have uh, gotten very soft. Uh, we have a lot of amenities that we really don't need. Absolutely. There's you, plenty of things to cut. Oh, absolutely. Besides, you know, shelter and food and clothing. Yep. And, and, you know, that's a fact. Right. Plenty of things to cut. Yep. And, uh, you know, th those are the th three basic things we but, need. But, uh, you we, know, you I'm, to... I'm being sincere about the town. I mean, it, it, it it's nice. It's nice to be able to say you've got enough money left over from all these things, and the Board of Vatican is well, going to take zero, and the town is going to cut your mill by, by well, the, the town wide by a, a, a one mill or whatever it is. Guys, you need to look closer. You need to find where you can cut. If everything's getting more expensive, what do you not need? There's got to be something. If I can find a few things in my home, you should be able to find plenty in a budget of this size in this community. Well, knowing it, that these people yes. are suffering, man. This is this is this year. You're going to help them out in that respect, but it's that's short lived. That's well, a short term you know, fix. The, the other thing the taxpayers got to look at this too is you know what? If every year. Uh, the school board can give money back, the town gives money back, and it all comes back. Are they being overtaxed to begin with? Yeah, I know. Okay, so number one, the, 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 the average... To my, to my, and to my knowledge, Barrow School, right, that, that, that reimbursement finally came back. That's $4 million. Right. So we lived without that money for six to eight years, whatever long that school's been. Now you got $4 million that came back, like winning a lottery, you know what I mean? Uh, you, and you're going to give someone a, a one mil decrease? Yeah. Well, or, I, you know, or I, like I said, and, deep, and we've, and have we already paid the $4 million? Of course we did. We, this is right. our money coming back. All right. There's no money. It's our money coming back. But what I'm getting at it. Should we, we just pay down the debt or should we uh, relief, just, give, give relief to the taxpayer? Get, maybe a little bit of both. Yep. Uh, split it in half. You know, yeah, take man. take two mills off and uh, when you When you have governors pay the screaming, debt down. you know, being screamed at to cut the, the, the gas tax and and then they're screaming to the federal level to cut that gas tax for a little while. I mean, grant to me, it just is another hole. But they're figuring with all the monies you have hanging around from the COVID money, you know, the, the rebuild the road programs and everything else, they can afford well, to do a, that. a lot of that but money. That's all short. That's all short term. Well, the, the, well, I understand it's all short term, and a lot of that money hasn't got to the final destination. Exactly, and you're stuff right. being done. Right. So you know, like I said earlier, maybe it won't actually get there with everything that's going on. Yeah, and uh, you know. The, Somebody's got to pay for that money. Right. All right. It, it, it you know it doesn't grow on trees. Yeah, they print it on a press, but it, all they're doing is adding to inflation. And down the road, you know those bills are going to come right. due too. And, and they, we can't keep kicking this and down. And here's the, road. the reality: as sad as things are, and it's very sad what's going on in the Ukraine. And you're hearing misinformation and all that stuff. Oh. And I'm not the Ukrainian war expert, expert. But and then it's it. So you, then you have a certain amount of people in this community because you see it on Facebook blaming the Ukrainian war on the uptick in gas. No, that's a piece of it, and it's exasperated the situation. The biggest no, the, piece the, is the Trump policy changes that he dumped on January of 20, uh, 2020. Oh, when Biden took when Biden took office. Yeah. He needs to reverse those immediately oh, to, to, to help well, us in, in 2023. Nothing there is going to help us we immediately. Were, we weren't importing Russian oil. No. Back then. Okay, or, or depending on who you want to believe, you'll be anywhere from three to ten percent, which is nothing on the grand scale of things. Correct to Russia on our end, but it will to our European partners. It is, but you know, let's be real and honest with each other. You just sit there and and, and everyone feels for these people. Oh, absolutely. Every day, I I, I just wake up and say, is it over? Can this well, end what, for these? I see this suffering, in, in, but today? don't blame all of that on what you're living right now in our own country. 
Oh, no, you can't. Don't. You, you please can't. don't. No. And, you know, uh, for me, I, I look at that and I say, really, in this day and age, we, we have to have this lunatic, oh. uh, you know, wage war on another country? You know, when everything, the world was just kind of humming along at an okay pace. Everybody was doing, you know, um, you you want to blame the United States for this war? You know what it is? It's our standard of living, the way we think about individual freedoms that threaten all these dictators and the, their livelihood and the things that they do, all right? Uh, Putin wants to keep his finger on everybody, as well as the Chinese uh, emperor there. I forget his name. But um, uh, that's how they keep their finger. And, sure. you know, between the Internet, the radio, the television, you know, you get these countries starting to experience uh, the way we live. I mean, you take a, a Russian from Moscow and throw him into one of our grocery stores with all the variety back a few years, you know, when it, everything was going crazy in our department stores, they wouldn't believe it that any, right. that, that it, this was, it just existed. Same, same with, uh, you know, um, a, a real sorry case is Venezuela. Correct. I mean, they were, they were doing gangbusters and then they, you know, uh, they, they got their dictator and, he, you know, and it's just like these Russian oligarchs, you know, they're, they're siphoning money off of everything that's going right. on and that's how they're building they, these They, they these can only stay in power so long up. as long as they have the military who, who still support them. But at some time, it's the military that says, hey, wait a minute. Well, I, hey, you know something? I really think that's what's going on with the Russian army in, in, in Ukraine. Well, I think the, some of these guys are going, wait, this isn't well, right. Well, you're right. Some of them were told, you know, anyway, I, like you said, we're not. We're not the experts of it. We're but. not the experts. But, you know, uh, you know, they perhaps realize in this day and age that, yeah, that's not the way to go do things. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Uh, I, I, I've been ver very surprised at how, I'm going to use the word impotent, they've been doing this. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they haven't been able to do it. But once again, like, you know, we can go back to their, or I'll go back to their submarines. You know, uh, a large portion of their submarine fleet can't even be used because they haven't been maintained. You know, I think a lot of the equipment, maybe a lot of the tanks, their jet fighters, they haven't been maintained. Mm. Because I, I read it in the paper, a lot of the money for the Russian military budget was siphoned off uh, to, to build yachts, to do other well, things. Well, was a general, was it, is it Jack Kellogg, I think his name is? And he, he, made it, he laid it out today. There's three major points of running an army. And I'm not, again, not a military guy by any stretch. But he, he visually showed us the... the um, the lack of leadership in the lack of just lack of controlling um, you, you send guys out ahead of you in tanks to see what's going on and the, the rest will follow and, and they can't even get those tanks to go any further because they have no fuel. oil no fuel no gas no food yeah they're breaking so down it, it, it's like he he had three he had three main reasons in how you you show that you you, you don't have it together and and he he proved that and I, I and I sat there with amazement because maybe we've been fearing Russia for a longer time for no well, reason. Well, you know, it, I think you have to fear uh, Russia for a certain amount uh, because they are a nuclear superpower. Yes, I agree. But you that. know what? I'd be willing to bet that thirty percent of their missiles in the silos won't make it out of the silo. Yeah, and, almost and like North Korea. <laughs> you know, and the minute we see them start fueling yeah. that stuff, we might just hit the button ourselves. Yeah. And I think uh, we probably maintain our equipment a little bit better. But anyway, we're about out of time. We are. So talking about missiles, hey, you know what? We got a budget coming up we need to shoot down and get that at least down five mils. So uh, till uh, next week, good night and God bless.